Hi, I'm Kent. A while ago, I made this pot. It was made by taking slip and applying it to the inside of the mold, which then transferred into the design. This one had been sitting on my shelf as bisquare for a while, but I finally managed to get it fired. You can see that in a recent video. This was my first attempt. I actually really like how it came out. So in this video, I'm going to try this again, maybe with a few different designs. I'm going to use these two molds. I'm going to apply a slip pattern on the inside of the mold and let it dry a little bit. And then off to the side here, I have my slip. I will fill it up with. So this is my bigger mold. So I think I'm going to fill it up with regular slip. And I think we'll put a few colors on the outside. So this is my yellow slip. I think I'm going to go more Jackson Pollock with these. So I'm going to just take some slip and start slinging it around. All right, there's yellow. Let's do some black as well. Same deal. And then finally, a layer of blue. This is fun. All right, I'll let that one set up for a minute and we'll put regular slip in there. Let me push it off to the side a little bit, get a little bit more room. Okay, so for this one, I think I want to fill it up with black slip. So let's do no yellow this time, but blue and then regular slip. So let's start with the blue. I have some slip in a bottle. I'm debating about using slip out of the container or the slip. Let's try and sling it around and see how well it works. Oh yeah, this is okay. It's a different effect. All right, I'll let those set for a minute longer and then we will fill it up with regular slip. I really like these. I think this is set reasonably well. I want to strain my slip so I don't get any chunkies in it since I just got it out of my bucket. However, this gets heavy after holding it. So I'm going to see if I can prop it up. And that way I don't have to hold it or hold it as much. This is good. The whole thing is centered over the top, although from your perspective, you can't quite see that angle. It's actually slightly leaning towards you. So now I can just pour the slip in. Oh, there was a big chunk. That's why I'm putting it through the sieve. This has some reclaimed clay in it that I don't think I mixed up quite enough. Awesome, we're coming to the top and a little bit over. Perfect. All right, perfect, that one's good. So we'll uh, shove it over to get some room. It's pretty heavy. And this one I put the black slip in, which I had just put away. All right, I don't wanna get my, have to clean my sieve out and get all of the black clay out of it. So I am hoping that there aren't any chunks in this one. I think it's pretty good. Okay, close to the top. Rotate it since things aren't quite level. All right, just overfold by a bit. All right, great. So let those sit and form the pot. So these have been sitting for a while. This one I think needs this a little bit longer. It hasn't released from the edge yet. It's still pretty soft. This one here is clearly pulled away. So I think it's ready to come out of the mold. So we've got a nice landing zone for it. Let's see if it'll come out. Oh yeah, no problem. 
Oh, that's really cool. Obviously that's the bottom, so we wouldn't see it as much. And there are the sides. There's still quite a bit of patterning on that. All right, that is very, very soft. So I'm just going to let it sit for a while. There it goes. Cool, so here they both are. Those are really cool. I like these. This one, probably the most interesting spot is gonna show up on the bottom, but that is okay. And this one has really cool effects around the outside. All right, so I am going to let these dry and we will come back to them later. All right, it's been overnight and these have dried. I think they turned out really cool. There's that one. I could probably get a little bit more on the sides. And then this one is pretty wild. So that's a lot of fun. I wasn't planning on making more of these, but I think I am going to because they were pretty cool. So let's set up and do that again. All right, I've got these two molds again, and then I have this one as well. This one probably really needs to be cleaned, but I'm not gonna bother right now. All right, this one last had yellow in it. So there's a little bit of residue on the outside. So I think I'm gonna leave this one mostly yellow. I have my darker yellow and my green as well as my blue hanging out. So I'm gonna keep with that color family. So let's start with the green. And the trick here is gonna be getting it up, up on the walls reasonably well. That was one of the problems I had with this mold here was actually getting the little swirlies up to the walls on the flatter parts it worked okay. So I'm gonna make sure to sling this back and forth a lot. All right, there's the first layer. Do this darker yellow color next. And then blue. All right, that's pretty crazy. Let it sit and then I'm gonna put in yellow. So for this one, I think I want it to be the body blue. So we'll pick some complementary colors to go with that. Maybe the yellow. And again, I wanna make sure to try and get the walls pretty well. And I think the green. And then a little bit of black. All right, there's those two. This one, let's see, I think I'm going to make this one regular clay on the outside since it is my largest mold. And 
and I think I'm going to go over it a second time so that way the colors get layered. All right, I'll let those dry for a few minutes. All right, I think this is set long enough. So I'm gonna pour the yellow in here. I'm sure I'm not gonna have enough. So I'm gonna rotate this around the sides. All right, I went all the way around sides a couple of times. I'm gonna let it sit and then do it again. I'll fill the inside with regular slip in a second. This one I wanted to do blue. I'm hoping that I have enough of this color. And I'm pretty sure my table isn't level. So go ahead and prop up this corner preemptively. All right, just enough. And for this one, I'm going to use the regular slip. All right, and go around one more time with this. Make sure we get a good coating of yellow. And then the rest is going to be regular slip. I'm starting to get some chunky, so I want to make sure to run through my sieve. All right, we'll let those sit for a while and build up the pots. All right, let's go ahead and trim these up. good. Let's do oh, the giant one. All right, I think we're pretty good. So there's one, two, and three. This one's starting to release. It's probably gonna be ready pretty soon. The others are still pretty sticky, so it'll be a while. All right, I think these have all released. Let's pull them out. First one. Let's do the bowl next. Pretty cool. And last but not least. These are all still pretty wet, especially the new ones. So I wanted to move you guys so you can see a better shot. So here is the new yellow one. That one's pretty cool. And then I'll rotate this around. New blue one, that's pretty cool too. And then finally, so here is also the new one. So similar to the one I did before, just different colors. 
awesome. All right, I'm gonna cover these all up so they dry nice and slowly. All of these pots made it through a successful bisque firing. You can start to see some of their colors. Right now they're still pretty muted. The actual final glaze firing, they'll really pop some more, but I think even right now they're really cool. I've got my clear glaze out here hiding off the side. I just mixed it up. Let's go ahead and glaze all of these. All right, none of these are small enough to actually fit in my glaze container, so I'm just gonna pour the glaze on. So I'll prop it up here and let it go for a swim or a shower, I guess. a couple times, make sure I got good coverage. While it's wet, I'll take my sponge and go ahead and dab off the bottom here. Get the foot. All right, and that's already dry enough to handle. I'll set it off to the side to dry the rest of the way. All right, we'll do one of the big ones next. Get this in my tray so I don't spill too much more. Same deal. Check to make sure the inside of the rim's good. And it is. Got a spot down here. Last one. And ta-da, here are all the pots out of the glaze firing. So all of these have the clear glaze on the outside and then the bottom's just raw clay. I've turned these all upside down so you can really see them. So we can start with this one off to the side. You can see all the different colors that have been sprinkled in and then has the yellow for the base and then white on the inside. I think this one turned out really well. Actually, I think all these all turned out really well. So I'm gonna say that a lot, I think, right now. Here are the square ones. This one's got a lot of contrast to it between the, the blue and the white and then the dark black. Inside's just plain black. Sometimes my clear glaze gets a little bit hazy, so I think maybe I put on a little bit thick, but overall, very happy with that. And this one again is a different color palette. And last but not least, these two big bowl-shaped planters. Again, some really big, bold colors that they just came through really well. So these turned out awesome. I had relatively low expectations going in. The last planter I did where I put the slip pattern in, I couldn't quite get the slip where I wanted. The end effect was still really, really cool. So I think embracing that chaos this time around was totally the right thing to do. These are all totally unique and totally interesting. So, and even better, it's really, really easy to get this effect. 
so you can get a really cool result without a ton of work. And I am all for that. So I'm just having fun. As always, if you have any questions or comments, please leave them below. And thanks.